Hey, hey, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we are going to take a close look at some 3DO Panasonic retro video game consoles. So also a big shout out to Mr. Port because he came to the Wicked Cave where we basically recorded a lot of different kinds of like piece of hardware when it comes to the 3DO. Because the 3DO Panasonic was a very sleek and stylish console for its time. But when it comes to the 3DO, it's absolutely a rabbit hole and we have all kinds of different versions. Beside that, we also having all kinds of cool let's say pieces of hardware they can buy and some things you're going to be needing if you're going to get into the 3do gaming so where this system was crazy expensive when it came out and yeah if you now want to find it it's still crazy expensive but still there are a lot of cool hidden gems on this system that you should like check out someday then also we're having like all kinds of cool new devices that you can buy and makes gaming on the 3DO so much more fun and way more affordable or kind of way affordable that you're still having like an easy and just a very cool way to play. And I wanted to dedicate this video to the 3DO. Thanks to Mr. Port, we can show a couple of different models and a other cool pieces of tech from 3DO that we can show off. The console's build quality was quite impressive with a solid and sturdy feel. The 3DO Panasonic hardware was advanced for its time and wanted to take the competition head on with more power. But this allowed to have like a smooth and fast gameplay experience with some impressive graphics and sound with some of the games that we actually played compared with the competition. But it's quite interesting with the 3DO released video game systems that we do have like all kinds of different models. Think about the Gold Star is one of those weird different ones. Senyu and all kinds of exclusive released versions depending what kind of region you want to buy. Because when you're looking into Japan we have like different models there. And also some of them are like pretty rare. So let's do a quick overview of the models we're having with Steining of the FZ1. I got one complete in box. Let's start with the Panasonic 3DO, the FZ1, the Japan edition. So this is particularly a very good one to get, basically one of the best ones that I understand of. The reason why is because the FZ1 does have like a support for every single game you can throw at it. Think about European, Japanese or US. Also this thing also has the like capability of running different kind of let's say resolutions. And I think if you're going to even like running on an LCD, it's not of course like the full retro way, you do have like a different way to play because if you're going to combine this with some awesome modification like RGB modded, you will have like a crisp clear image even on an LCD. But the FZ1 has basically two different modes, giving you the option to play on 240p or on 480i giving you so you the option to have like a different output. Also my version, the only version having here comes even complete with the original box. And as a lot of collectors know, it will give you like an extra value, but also it is of course way more expensive at the same time to buy. The FZ1 also has been released, of course, in different regions, but the other regions didn't have like the option for the A and B selection that the Japanese version already has. And of course, that makes the superior version when it comes to all the different regions. So take consideration if you want to get one, the FZ1 with the Japan version is way better, especially if you really want to have the best signal output. So the Panasonic 3DO FZ1, I must say that I personally really love the design. It's a very big clunky device. Back in the day also when it was just released, it was absolutely expensive. But later on, we'll do like a full video about it. This version FZ1 3DO Panasonic is fully modded and it's going to be one epic video to make. But again, I want to make a dedicated video to that particular model and with all the modifications you're going to get in 2023. Let's talk about the FZ10 Panasonic 3DO. So Panasonic was quite expensive, especially the FZ1 back in the day. So they tried to make something that was a little bit more, like say, cheaper to buy for the people, to get people basically like buying a 3DO. And I must say the FZ10 was also like a very compact model and also came with a top loader, something we have seen with the PlayStation 1, for example. But if you're looking at the specifications of this device, it was absolutely the same when it comes to the spec. So there wasn't like an improved disk drive. They're still using the two speed disk drive that we have in every single model I'm showing you here on the channel. And the FZ10 was like one of those different ways to play. And when you're going to look at the FZ10 now, it also is going to be a little bit less cheaper to buy. Of course, depending when you're going to see this video and searching for the games and everything that you're going to need. Because when it comes to 3DO, it's not like the most cheapest system out there. But the FZ10, I personally really like it. The top loading, like mechanism and everything, how it looks and how it plays. 
So when it comes to 3DO, we have even more options. One of them were their Gold Star Edition, a particular system I have seen a lot in my region because that is basically what happens. Back in the day, they were selling this more in the European region, but this is a particular system that I personally find very often. And it makes a sense because this is one of those systems they sold a lot in Europe. What I understand of, we have two kind of models when it comes to the colors. We're having here the two color ones, and we also have like one that's absolutely full gray. So a front loader like the FZ1 and again have like the same feature and specifications. But let's take a close look at the Sanyu Japan exclusive model. He brought this from his own collection because these things are pretty damn rare. And of course, like with Magic, it comes with a crazy price. But nevertheless, beside that point that it is rare and maybe super expensive, the thing is it's basically internally the same like all the other ones that we're having. So there's nothing extra or like an extra feature. It's like looking differently. Personally, I do like the way how it looks. What I understand of like when they were leasing, they wanted to export this model also in different regions. But yeah, we're going to get into point that was like end of life of 3D open as so they never got to the point they wanted to ah, just like release them in different regions so they just has been like released back in Japan and when it comes to features think about like all the things we're going to talk about they were basically the same we have like the same disk speed etc so it was like an outer case is different and of course if you like a 3d collector you want to have them all like the freaking Pokemons you just need to have one in your collection Another interesting thing were the controllers. Yep, we have like different kind of controllers because we're having different kind of systems. So what we're going to get are basically five licensed or original controllers. The Capcom one is, yeah, it's an original one license. But yeah, when you're looking into the aftermarket, there we're going to get like a gazillion different ones with six buttons. But just want to focus on these five. So when you're buying a particular system, you're going to get yourself like a unique controller. We're having like a bigger and more like a slim version. And also, of course, the Senyu and also the Gold Star have their own controller. And the Street Fighter one you can nowadays pick up. They are like super expensive. But again, like that's what it is with like say super cool collectible items like the 3DO. And some particular like products are just expensive to get in the end. One of those crazy expensive things that you can get is this special limited edition fight controller pad for the 3DO. Man, this thing is absolutely awesome. I really love to play with this thing. And this is the ultimate way to play the Street Fighter 2 on the 3DO. <laughs> But let's take a close look at the original Panasonic controller. We have more like the Juke controller like with the Xbox Classic because we have two kind of versions. And I can tell you like it's more like a personal thing. I really like both of them. So this is the first version that we're going to get. It's like from the original FZ1. And this particular control also have even a headphone jack out at the bottom. So this is kind of interesting even like volume control. So I think it's a really damn cool feature if you look at it like back in the day. Then of course we're having like the slim version and the slim version was slimmed down, was for better for let's say people with smaller hands and didn't have the headphone jack function anymore. Do get like this Mega Drive one to two vibe that they remove something, I really personally hate it. Yeah, but this is way smaller than the first edition. Personally, I love like Juke Xbox controls and the same also implemented for the Panasonic. So with the Gold Star, but also with the Senyu, we're going to get ourselves like different controllers or the San Hero is a more like a little bit different story let's talk about the gold star first because the gold star i can tell you this thing plays absolutely crap like i don't like the controller it, it no no not at all like it's, it's way too bulky or the form factor is not that comfortable like the original pad also the d-pad itself it's nope absolutely you know nope 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 we do have like a headphone jack out that's kind of cool the Senyu controller yeah so i was looking at it and i was thinking hey this is quite familiar and when you're looking at it, it plays absolutely and holds very comfortable in the hand. Way better than the Gold Star because the D-pad of the Gold Star is absolutely rubbish. But I was looking at it and Mr. Port said to me like, hey, did you know like the Senyu is basically the same like the original Panasonic controller? I was more like, wait, what? So basically what they did, they had like the same mold. So that is the thing they did like basically like cloned from the other one or used from the other one. It's indeed exactly the same kind of controller. But I'm going to make a dedicated video about this Capcom controller. Also doing, doing a quick teardown. Just wanted to see how they made this. Like some people will hate it. I really love it. I think it's super comfortable. And just like the ultimate way to play Street Fighter 2 on the 3DO. But again, it's going to be like an expensive way to play. Because this is an absolutely like 
crazy expensive thing. I bought it myself from Japan because I am just a big fan of Street Fighter. I just need to have this controller. But let's also take a close look at the way how you need to connect your controller because that is a quite interesting method. I cannot really recall if there are anything like else on a product like having this because they're having only one single port. And yup, it's like the similar like plug like the Mega Drive. But this controller uses the Daisy Link Chain connection. And it means like if you want to connect a second controller, you need to connect it in the first one. The Capcom controller has like a separate box in the cable. I personally really love this way. Just basically plug in the cable like that and the Daisy Link is ready. Plug this plug in the system and it will be recognized perfectly without any problem. All right, next up, the memory unit. Can you still remember like the memory units for the PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2 and your Panasonic had the same thing. You will connect this with your Panasonic. What I understand of this thing is just like universal. You can use it for every single one you're getting. If it's a Gold Star, it's on you or just the FZ1 or the FZ10. You're just going to have like a memory card. Yeah, absolutely crazy expensive nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the problem with these things. Like, if you want to have like memory card for your Panasonic 3DO, you need to buy them from like eBay or something like that. Yeah, and finding one in good condition, it's going to be in challenge. In total, 256 kilobyte, if I'm recalling correctly. And if you're going to play a lot of games with 3DO, you're going to need it. And how are you going to use it? It's quite simple. We have this special port on every single 3DO over there on the FZ1 at the back with a connection of the television. You're just going to plug in this bad boy and will be recognized automatically by the system. And there you have it like this gigantic black box connected to your Panasonic 3DO. To be honest, if you look at it now, it's looking kind of cool, but also laughable at the same time. Another upgrade that we're going to get is the VCD upgrade. So basically video CD was more like something between let's say the VHS tapes and DVD. And we have like all kinds of upgrades when it comes to like the 3DO. From like gigantic ones or another one that looks a little bit similar to the Sega CD2 if you know like what I mean with that. And also like a tiny one you can slap into your gold star. So in my opinion, they didn't really thought it through. Like when you're looking at the FZ1 and you're looking at the module you should like buy back in the day, like if you want to watch some video CD, oh man, like it's absolutely looking pretty damn horrible. How do you connect it? So they did prepare it like when it comes to the system, quite interesting. Like they did thought it through when it comes to connecting and upgrades. So basically you just slide this gigantic thing in at the side. You basically screw down the screw so it will fit perfectly on your machine. And then you're ready. You're ready to go into the video CD and you can just watch it on your 3DO. I think it's pretty damn cool. But when you're looking at it, it looks pretty damn hideous. Like, oh man, look at this, like this gigantic block at the right and nothing at the left. It completely de destroys the design of the machine. But also with the FZ10, we do have like one, and it looks so much better, you know, like it indeed like gives me like an upgrade and it looks so much more better and sleek. For my opinion, when it comes to the VCD, I personally prefer to have the SZ10 with the VCD because in the end it looks way better. And also we have a top loader, so it's so much easier to slap in your games, like open it up, pop them in and let's it go. It's kind of funny and for the gold star, like it was nothing like this FZ10 version. Nope, not at all. It was like a tiny one you can just click in. So they did improve that in the gold star. I did make a video dedicated to the VCD, but this was like a particular one with the PlayStation 1. It was like this, not official add-on you could buy, like you needed to solder a chip inside your PlayStation 1 Slim. But it came with the Fun Zone, like the name already, like Fun Zone, whatever. The thing is kind of funny, and also like shown a lot of different movies i had like a box full of these things and they were like absolutely like, kind of cool to be honest like a lot of weird asian movies and of course they did just release like a lot of familiar movies think about a terminator or i think it was in total recall but yeah i had a box full of these weird thing i was kind of cool to see like different like these thin like metal cases but I did check the quality when it comes to some of these movies and I would expect that if you're going to play it on a 3DO it will even look better. Of course depending what kind of movie you're going to watch in the end. And again like it's going to be like a different experience, something more like a novelty nowadays because DVDs are like so dirty cheap now. But again we have collectors for all kinds of medium. But okay so then we have like the ODA Ultimate Upgrade, the Optical Drive Emulator. The one I'm holding here is the export made by Fixel. So far I understand this is the only company having an external ODA solution. 
What I really like about it that we do have a look solution now they can plug into your machine. The consideration this version you're seeing is more like a concept or a first edition release. If you're going to buy one now it's going to be looking completely different. And I mean like especially when you're looking at the external version. But also the same company makes an eternal one. You can just plug into your dive. If you don't want to have like the disk drive or you have a broken laser you can replace it by an ODA. But this is of course like a super cool solution and take consideration it's not going to be a cheap solution. I think this is the most expensive thing you can buy. An export ODA external is absolutely like the only way to play. And of course I already mentioned you can still play original games. I think that is pretty cool. Another solution I have myself is the M Nemo. We want to make a dedicated video for the FZ1 with the M Nemo. This is a built in ODA. So, what you can do is like put in a USB drive in the ODA. You don't have the option to play physical games anymore. That is unfortunate. But what you can do is like slap on your games and just enjoy them and have like very fast loading times. Collecting and playing video games in the 3DO is, in my opinion, the next level because they are not cheap. Uh, that's the main problem when it comes to these devices. But I just wanted to show you some quick games that I really liked. Road Rest, The Way of the Warrior, Return Fire, Mist, like a lot of different familiar titles, but also cool titles. My favorite ones are, for example, Return Fire, but also going to play a couple of games. And of course, Street Fighter, one of my favorite games to play. But this is more like a Mortal Kombat ripoff, The Way of the Warrior. It's kind of laughable, like it's so bad. Like it's... <laughs> I'll give you like a great example how the intro sounds when playing actually a game. Welcome to Noble Challenger, prepare to find the way. Round one, fight. Okay, so the game in general, it's like pretty damn bad. Like, oh man, like, <laughs> it's so bad that it's, you know, like it's absolutely funny to play actually. But the character I'm playing called just Ninja. I couldn't like let you hear a lot of the music because it's all like copyrighted. So I completely understand that collectors want to have this game because it's so bad that it's actually fun to play. But let's take a close look at one of my favorite games. It's like Return to Fire. Because Return to Fire, I did play it back in the day on my PlayStation 1. And I personally have the idea that this 3D version is way better. Nevertheless, it's a very fun game to play. You can play it alone or with friends. Basically, what you need to do is go to your opponent's building, destroy it, and then go to grab yourself like a Humvee and just grab the flag. That's the only thing that you need to do. It's quite challenging and a lot of fun. And when clearing a stage, you're going to get every single time a different video, or at least so far I have seen. And when you basically die in the game itself, you're going to get yourself the best outro ever. <laughs> but if you wonder why the 3DO failed, Mega Race is one of those games where you're thinking, yep, now I understand why, because oh boy, this thing is bad. <laughs> But of course we also have like some old school classics like Need for Speed on the 3DO and very cool game. I understand there's even like a modded version when it comes to the game that you have like a better like faster speed experience. And another classic game is of course Rose Rash. I've played this game absolutely crazy a lot on the PlayStation 1 and the 3DO port is a great game if you're having a 3DO to check it out. <laughs> If you don't have a good quality control when it comes to the games, you're going to get games like Plumbers Don't Wear Ties. A very like weird looking game where you basically see movies all the freaking time. And this game is absolutely so bad that it is like level. Oh, deja vu. I've seen this already. First decision, please. Better than a singles bar. At least we can hear each other. Uh, you are single. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm in but let's get into the good stuff and let's do a quick test of the Capcom controller because oh boy this is one of the reasons why I wanted to have a 3DO. I know I'm crazy. I'm absolutely wicked gamer if it comes to this stuff. Beside the arcades this is my favorite console Street Fighter 2 game to play. <laughs> No. 
The 3DO Panasonic Retro Video Game Console was a groundbreaking system that helped to shape the future of gaming technology. Its powerful hardware, unique controller design and the CD-ROM technology set it apart from all the other consoles at the time. However, it just came with a very high sprite tag and is one of the reasons that it just failed. In my opinion, the, that every single game was great, but a couple of them on this machine are absolutely hidden gems. It's just a beloved piece of gaming history and as an owner of 3DO, I am very happy to have it in my collection. If you have any questions, you can always leave it in the comments. Thanks for watching, consider subscribing and supporting the channel and it would be great to see you in the next video.